Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is a show where I review every single science fiction book that I read as I read it, except not today, because today is episode uh, 350. Woo-hoo. And uh, yeah, joining me is Juliana. She's sitting next to me. Say hello. Hello, everyone. And uh, we're going to talk about something which I haven't actually told Juliana what I'm talking about. And this might uh, uh, probably come as not that much of a surprise to some people, but uh, I want to talk about something that I noticed two years ago, like in uh, 2015. I realised that I'd read 10 books in a row by men and I was like, oh, that's like 10 books in a row by male authors. That's not very good. You know, represented, <laughs> re- representation of, of women authors on this podcast, you know, because yeah. there's some great women authors and stuff like that. So I thought, well, let me just go and check out what my record is through the years, because it's almost 10 years I've been doing this podcast now, and at the time, almost eight years or something. So I was like, let's go back and see what my ratio was over time of women authors to men authors. And I was uh, pretty much blown away by how bad I was at the start. Okay, so it starts off episode one, introduction, episode two, Joan D. Vinge. And you're thinking, okay, woman author. Next one, Pamela Sargent. Okay, Three, there was two books in a row by women authors. And then when you actually have a look at this list, it goes Heinlein, Alice Reynolds, Stuart Gordon, Peter Evan Hamilton, Robert Reed, and you just keep going down and keep going down and keep going down. Who is A.A. A. Atanasio? A, no, China know. Medieval is... Uh, actually, I should probably... Uh, like, if I'd have d- done a... Oh, I missed it there. But anyway, if... Uh, unless there's a, someone who's got initials AA, and this is often something I do, I don't realise if the person is is going to be uh, male or female. I think it was P.D. James I did the, uh, nope, is a guy, you see, so that doesn't count. So you keep scrolling down and keep scrolling down this list. If you go to episode lists at sfbrp.com and you get all the way down to um, episode 68, Ursula K. Le Guin, which was, 2000, which was October the next year. So I managed to go over a year without reading any science fiction um, that I reviewed. I did read some fantasy uh, novels in that time, which were by uh, by women authors. But that is pretty impressive. Like over a year, not reviewing a single author, female author, and That's like quite impressive. But sixty sixty six episodes or sixty six books in a row without getting through that. But one. sometimes women use male. Uh, names, right? Not in to, these cases. To, to be like, okay, yeah. how can we make it that people read... Okay, well, let's not get into James Tiptree Jr. Because again, <laughs> that is something that we maybe talk about. So then I was like, okay, now my, my ratio of men did get better than 2 to 68 or whatever it was in the, in the first year or two. But it was one of those strange things which I noticed that I, I, I had noticed that I'd not read any women authors for 10 books in a row. And I noticed that in 2015. But in 2008 and 2009, it's not that I didn't even notice it. I didn't even notice that I hadn't noticed it. Of Does course. that make sense? Like sure. I had you were just reading. I was just reading books. books. I didn't think. I didn't think about my reading of science fiction as sort of like, oh, I need to read diverse authors or anything like that. I was just like, oh, I've got some favorite authors, and some of them happen to be women, but I just didn't get to those books. Like I said before, like the the, the last book that I read before I started the podcast was Down Below Station by C.J. Cherry and or Sherry or whatever you pronounce the name and uh, and then those books so it was like three women authors in a row so it's not as if I was like oh I don't read women authors or anything but it, it wasn't even that I even thought about it like sure some of these authors are my favorite authors some of them are not authors and I'm just sort of like oh I just go to the bookshop and what books were on the shelves I just pick them up and and read you know, and there was some series of books that I'd read just recently. Uh, is Julian May again? Now I'm not even sure. Is Julian May is that a female or not? Because there's some some authors that I'm thinking um, is is that male or female? But then it sticks in my head and I can't remember. Yeah, so Julian May. I just read like loads of Julian May and all these other authors who I I really enjoyed, like long series of women authors and things and fantasy books or whatever. But it was one of those times where like I guess it was just I just fell into it, but I kind of felt. It was only like last year when I probably looked back and was like, well, how bad was it? And I was like, oh, like way worse. Pretty bad. Way, way, way worse than I than I thought. So, um, so I don't think there's, unless I do the podcast for literally another 10 years after this, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it. So like I have an equal representation of women authors to male authors because there's this massive backlog of just male author after male author after male author with just like uninterrupted for 65 episodes in a row except by authors I'm like oh was that a was that a, is just some, some some initials is that a male author or a female author oh it turns out it's a male author you yeah. know so um yeah 
yeah. Uh, so what I decided to do in uh, two years ago, at the end of October, two years ago, was after noticing that I'd not read female authors for 10 books in a row, yeah. I thought, well, from now on, uh, for the next however long I do this, let's just make it so I just do it uh, equal. So I always read as many female authors as male authors. Did you do that? Yeah. I didn't notice. Exactly. And this was the experiment was sort of like, I could have done like, oh, I'm going to only read, I'm going to only read women authors. I think if I was just like, I'll only read women authors, I think that would have been really noticeable, you yes. know, because not just because I was only reading women authors, but there's like my favorite author, some of my favorite authors are guys. And it would be a bit weird sort of like if books came out by them, like a we new, a new Alistair Reynolds book comes out or a new Peter Beth Hamilton book comes out and I just, just never get to it. And, uh, and then just only reading these, um, other, you know, other authors who all just happen to be female. Now I did this, I set this up two years ago and I've been doing this for two years. I haven't had a single person comment on it. Not even a single, like you yourself have been reading this, you know, reading a lot of these books along with me and you haven't commented it and just didn't notice it anymore. And now this is the first time that you've ever noticed it. And that's why I didn't want to talk to you. That's why I didn't want to introduce what I wanted to talk about in this episode. Okay. Just to see, like, did you notice, I mean, you don't read all the same books as me, but we've been reading quite a few books together. Did you realize that like most of the books that we've both read together and talked about have been female authors? Really? A, a lot have of them. Been? Yeah, a lot know. of them have I, been. Uh... I, I, I know I'm putting I you on I the spot a bit here. I but. don't pay attention particularly, is the author male or female? Yes, exactly. I, and that's what I was in. I didn't pay attention to what they were, if they're male or female. And it turns out I read 65 books by male, male authors in a row with no, with no interruption by any female voices in there at all for a year and a half at the start of this podcast. So anyway, that's my point, is that I was also thinking, oh, I don't notice if they're male or female or not. And it turns out, if I don't notice if they're male or female or not, 2008 to 2009, Luke, just read male authors. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think that it might be a little bit of a difference because even unconsciously, I'm, I'm choosing uh, books that, that are not only by males. Yeah. I think like if I go and look for books and then I read something that sounds interesting to me, uh, uh, then I, I would, I, 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 in my book thing, I have like loads of like peop books there. What's that? What do you mean? In, in Goodreads or what yeah, you're talking in, about? Yeah, like in, in my Kindle app and in my oh, right, I, yeah. I, I, iBooks app and yeah. stuff. So I have that quite, quite a lot of books mm. by uh, women authors. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess I just... Yeah, it's not something you it, think about. It, would it, should it be something that you pay attention? Well, this is the thing. I found myself noticing it, I think, because even two years ago, there was a lot kind of like, just in science fiction, there was more of the, uh, you know, the Hugo Awards with the, um, what you call it, the um, the sad puppies. And there's all this political stuff about, you know, sort of alt-right kind of, before the alt-right was there, they were they, they invading science fiction, and all these yeah. different awards. The Hugo Awards were taken over by people who didn't want diversity. Literally, they were saying, we don't want diversity in science fiction. Oh, it should all be, crap. And, and yeah, and I was saying, the, 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 the awards were kind of reflecting that until last year, there were no straight white male authors uh, nominated for either the Hugo or the Nebula. I can't remember which one it was, but it was all like, you know, there was a, a Chinese author who's translated, like three women, um, one transgender person, and I can't, I can't remember exactly what it, the lineup was. But this was at the wave, and I was like, am I part of the problem here of being someone who thinks that the solution to underrepresentation of women or transgendered or gay people or black people or all these other minorities. Is it me just going, oh, I don't want to think about those kind of things. I just read the books that I like. Am I part of the problem? And I kind of came to the conclusion that if I don't even notice that, yeah, I probably am part of the problem. But instead of me like just saying that at the time and just going, oh, well, you know, oh, I'm not part of the problem or I am part of the problem. It was kind of like, can I do an experiment on myself and my own podcast and my own listeners to my own podcast and even you, my girlfriend who reads a lot of books with me, could I do a kind of subversive, well, not much submersive, but just kind of like a secret thing. Like I will be, I will be the change that I would prefer to see in the world, but not be preachy about it and just keep it secret for two years and just see if anyone notices. Yeah. Maybe, maybe people have noticed, but that's kind of what I want to talk about is my experience of reading 50% women authors for the last two yeah. years. And I even was, if that's enough. I was thinking that in general, I think the, the, the book 
world kind of changed yeah. a bit, especially like you know with uh, NK uh, NK Jemison Jemison and. Uh, uh, yeah, Han, just yeah, Han Yu, Yu, Yoon Ha Lee. Yeah, Lee, yeah. yeah there is more like, diverse more, voices in it. Yes, and like Anne Leckie. Yeah, and like that, and that's the thing. Like that is, of course, I'm a trailing indicator of this change. If you know what I mean. Like yeah. I, it, this all change was already in progress and things, but I still don't think it's good enough or far enough along. And I do think, in a way, that the Hugo Awards that there weren't any straight white male authors nominated for the major. Awards. It's, it's sort of like it's it's only just like redressing the balance of massive overrepresentation by lots of straight white authors and Connie Willis. You know that's kind of what it was. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, so it's sort of like oh no, we have women. It's like no, you have two or, or you know or Lewis McMaster Bajold or something like yeah. you've got two or three women authors yeah. who are overrepresentative of of Hugo and Nebula Award winners and things like that. Is that always like your yeah. These are the, the, how do you say, the, your get out of jail. Yes, it's sort of like, oh, no, no, we're not, we're not sexist. We have two women authors who win all the awards. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so that's the kind of thing. It's sort of like, oh, am I just going, oh, I've got a few female. Anyway, so it turns out, just, just to go over this kind of thing, I was like, well, how will I do it so I'm not annoyed that I'm not reading the books that I want to? Like, will I be annoyed at going, oh, I've got to read another book by a woman to keep up my, you know, just a, like a running quota? And it turns out, no, because I always have a list, a list of books, which is long, like, the list of books that I want to read is always longer than the, the time I've got to read the books or something sure. like that. Yeah. There's always books that I want to get to, which I'm just like, look, I might just never, I just might never get to that book because there's so many books that I want to read, even though at any one time, and I was just saying this before about my Goodreads list of, of on my to-read list, yeah. I was just like, oh, there's actually lots of books in here that I just don't actually, I'm not that interested in. I want my to-read list to be any book, so if you give me any of these books and just give it to me, and I'll just be like, yeah, good, I'm glad I'm now going to be reading this. But of course, that isn't how life works, and sometimes you want to read a book, you're just like, okay, I'm a bit over long fantasy books, just give me something light and fluffy and some space adventure now. Or, yeah. oh, okay, I'm a bit burnt out on, you know, epic space <laughs> opera, just give me a, a fun adventure story or a horror story or you know some of the kind of thing so it but at any time that I was thinking that and I would just look at my to read list or to look into the list of books on the on the Goodreads topic you know on the on the SFBRP listener group there just to say um or I just ask like okay let's have a look like of all the books that are recommended to me make a list of the top five or six books that you want to read and if one of those is by a woman we'll just get to that one first Okay. And it was really interesting just to see how easy it was. Just to, oh, just get to the woman author first. And that was all it took. It was just sort of like, you've got, a list of, you've got a list of 10 books that you want to read in the next six months or so. Which, which authors are, are women? Get to that book first. And then as more books come onto your immediately, I want to read it soon, the male authors, well, they'll just drop off. Because you you maybe didn't you didn't care about that book enough anyway if okay. you know what I mean. Let me let me get my iPad. Uh, you're I want to check your, this in my. Um, in my list. You're, you're going to check what like your own reading uh, list or something. Okay, so I, again I was just kind of surprised at how totally non-stressful it was and totally not a, an issue it was. Just this to, is how it should be. It's exactly, and like, that was kind of one of the big lessons. Also. Like, it turns out that equal representation. If you want it, of course. Again, just to clarify, this podcast is a record of my reading. So there's never going to be women's voices, as in reviewers, represented on this podcast as much as my own, because this is me and I am male and straight and white. I do have a girlfriend. She's sitting right next to me now. And it is good to have some a little bit of diversity there as well. Oh, this is sorted backwards by date red. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So is, uh, yeah, actually mostly guys there. So uh, anyway, you have a quick look through that. Um, so yeah, that's one thing. Like I, I can't be diverse in my own right. Like I am not a diverse voice. I am straight, white, male, European, kind of middle class, whatever. Um, and there's only so much extra representation I can bring onto a podcast, which this is not an interview podcast. I can't interview um, women authors and I don't talk it's not like reading envy where I can get on other readers to talk uh, through books with me a lot it's just me and you know quarter of the time Juliana coming along with me um, in this uh, in this journey so what what are you thinking well there's certainly like big stretches talk, where talk there's, the oh, there's big stretches where there's just male authors but then yeah. like I have 
uh, a lot bunched up, which is yes. just... It just happens that you read all the Ancillary Mercy, yeah, Ancillary and Justice. Becky Chambers, yeah, Chambers, and then I read here The Fifth Season and All the Birds in the Sky. A to Kill a Mockingbird, not really a, a science fiction book, but also a... Yeah. Uh, uh, a woman author. And uh, and who was it else? Uh, there was oh, Ursula K. Le Guin. And then I read some, uh, generally some, cri- I'm coming out from crime novels. Yes. I read a lot, a lot, a lot of crime novels. And that's like mm-hmm. 70% women. Yes. So there's <laughs> In like, German crime you know, novels. like K. Scarpetta. And like, I read a few history, like, uh, histories, historical romance, history historical fiction, fiction yeah. yeah, and that's women as well. That's a also a lot of, yeah. there in that in that section. The re- overrepresentation of women is in comparison, like kind of like the opposite. Yeah. I did read a blog post by John Scalzi, who uh, he had one of his books nominated for a, I think like a, ro- it was a, I think it was a romance award or something. He went along there, and it was he said it was weird because he was on the opposite end. Instead of it being sort of like uh, three women so, and yeah, uh, the, nine the, authors. Um, yeah, on all the panels, he was always the, the token guy on all of the panels, yes. uh, you know, these discussion panels and things like that. All right, I think you've looked yeah. back through your book, list of books uh, yeah. quite a bit there. So, yeah, that was a that was point. Like, the only way that I can introduce real diversity of views and opinions onto my own podcast, which is a white guy talking about books, the only way I can do that is by my reading choice. And in this way, I did make more of an effort to read women and also black women and other represent, you know, different minority representation as well and i know it's probably not good enough because the 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 white straight male authors are still 50 percent and they they aren't 50 percent of the world and they aren't probably aren't 50 percent of fiction and if they're not it's i'm sorry white male are probably more than 50 percent but the the only way that i can start changing that is by the books that I pay for, the books that I read, and the books that I talk about. So all the time that I'm saying, actually, I think this is one of the great novels that I've read recently. And and I w- may not have got to it if I hadn't have got said, let's just get to the women authors first. You know, I just, you know, just get to them first. Yeah. And yeah, it feels like, again, just in a very small way of me redressing my own past imbalance. I'm not trying to redress the imbalance in the world. It's kind of more just to kind of say... I, being a, a white straight male with even the tiniest amount of influence on my readers and listeners, not my readers, my listeners' reading habits, you know, yeah. just the smallest amount of influence, my outweighed, my, the, like, my small amount of influence is outweighing a lot of other people's, you know, personal journeys. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's just sort of like a slight little, um, fingers on the scales back in the other direction and unfortunately I think that's all I can do unless I'm just like oh I'm only going to read women authors for the next two years but I don't think I would do that because that would make me unhappy because there would be some male authors books which I'd be like oh I really want to get to this yeah it would also be a bit unfair that you just cut away all the things that that come out that you're interested in yeah I don't think that's good but I think I like the approach of just adding a bit more variety and diversity. Well, it, and that, that extreme undiversity was only at the start of the podcast. Yeah, of I did read more women, but again, it was it was just that real crazy thing. Oh, I've not read any women authors for 10 books in yeah. a row. And then like, how did I used to be? And I was just like, oh my God, that's so yeah, bad. That's quite crazy. So, uh, so but um, in general, do you think like um, when you see what books come out, get published or get, you know, like... Uh, advertised or hyped or whatever um do you think this is like something they're more generally more male books or again published i I don't know i don't know how did you then make the choice of which books yeah well just yeah what what people had recommended one of the main reasons i kept i do this podcast well two reasons i had starting off is i wanted a record of my own reading yeah because this was i think before goodreads existed or whatever and i kept on getting books out of the bookshop getting home reading the first chapter and be like ah i've not only read this before this is the second time i've picked it off the shelf (laughs) started reading it and thought oh i've read this alistair reynolds book before and then you know didn't finish it off and put it back on the shelf and then i did that with with absolution gap i did that twice i actually read it then got it off the shelf and started it and then got into the second chapter i'm like oh no i read this before and then like a year later got it off the shelf again started reading i was like oh no i have read this before 
I've I've not only read it before, yeah. I've thought I've not read it before and started yeah. reading it before. So before. you're getting the, the book off the shelf because you read the back and you think, oh, this sounds interesting. And it's I an author like that I like, but yeah. all of Alice Reynolds' books used to have a spaceship on the front with a planet of the spaceship. And it's sort of like, you couldn't, I couldn't keep them much apart. And I was like, I need a record of, of what I'm doing. And I thought, and if I get listeners to this podcast... Um, to and, help you and there's no reason why people would start listening to it except that it was a podcast before there was you know now there's loads and loads of podcasts everyone's talking about books but when I started this there wasn't like a podcast scene there was like four of the podcasts which were talked about science fiction and they would talk about it like like and, and books but they would talk about it more generally and it would be fan stuff and author interviews and I was like no I just want each episode one book let's go so uh, so yeah and, and the other thing is like if people did start listening they would recommend books to me and that would be a good way for it for people to recommend books and that has been fantastic you know both yeah. of these things have worked I do have a great record now of 10 years worth of reading science fiction reviews of every book coming up what 350 episodes the uh, the anniversary will be January next year for 10 years I mean it's a big project and loads of people have recommended loads of books to me and I really do enjoy it because even if I don't like the book like even if I wouldn't have I thought, oh, I wouldn't have read that book if it was recommended to me and I did read it and I kind of wish I hadn't read it in a way, I still, I'm still glad that I have read it because people have recommended it to me. You yes. know? So I've, I've taken on board other people's lives in a way, what so they think is valuable. Some sort of social interaction. Yeah, some social interaction around, yeah. uh, around this. And that was a thing as well. There was only like when I moved to Berlin, um, uh, I didn't really know anyone that I could nerd out and talk about science fiction books to very much. You know, there was like two people at the bookshop around yeah. the corner from oh, where yeah. I used to live you know I talk about it and then I was like you know what I could just record these things and I would talk a bit about uh, Topola my previous German girlfriend for people listening now just catching up and uh, and I'd talk about it and I'd say oh this book and she was just like why are you talking to, why, what are you talking to me about that not that she didn't want to hear about it but like when I got into a long rant about sort of like a science fiction book or some minor point of this thing or something she was like why are you telling me that and I was like eh, yeah I should probably <laughs> maybe find a different venue to talk about this so uh, so yeah, it was just a, it's just a, a strange, you know, just a, just a project. But like I say, any small amount of influence that I have, again, the only way that I can get past my own um, boring, straight, white, white male, you know, ness, ness <laughs> of myself is to, in my own reading, make a conscious decision to give a little bit of more representation. And you know, for women, I think women do, de 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 you know, they. Uh, they should have at least, about, you know, about 50%, let's just say, you know? Well, the, what's that look yeah. at me? Yeah. I was just thinking, do you think you re realize a certain uh, content, like a, a shift in content or like a shift in topics? Or well, yeah, like... let's get onto that. But let's first, because I'll, I'll, I wanted to talk about that as well. But yeah, let's, well, let's, just, let's just bring, bring this up as well. So I just made a note back from two years ago, Claire North, The First 15 Lives of Harry August. You, you, read that one didn't you as well no i didn't read oh you it. didn't read it oh you should read it because it's okay. good and uh it's in my library yeah. yes um the audiobook's really good oh, and this is when you started oh yeah so that's what i'm saying so that time i was like oh, okay let's get to some female authors and then i was like claire north and lecky and then you know stephen erickson then octavia butler elizabeth moon and you're like okay so there's five authors in a row four of them women so that's pretty good so anyway i just made a, a thing here you see like once i got yeah. to a streak of like three men male authors in a row i'd be like oh let's get to some of the women authors as well and sometimes i would go i think like uh th like here there happens to be three female authors in a row or whatever so um so yeah it but happened shouldn't that be normal yes it should that's the thing it should be normal like if i'm flipping a coin to to how many yeah, it looks authors like i'm so one, yeah. one 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 yeah yeah it's yeah, like it a paradiddle looks... or something like that but again looking down here now this is slightly out of track so c counting the last book that i've read which is actually the I've, I've not reviewed it yet because we're doing this episode slightly out of time, one, one episode early. We did Annalie Nevitt's Autonomous and then the next one I'm going to read is a woman author. And uh, so then that gets to exactly as, as far as um, uh, cisgendered people are, it's 25 and 25. So that's 50 books as well. But then we've got some, if I was actually to count how people would look at themselves, their own uh, gender identification, put in the trans authors. And you just said it's Trans Awareness Month or something like that. Yes. You just mentioned that before we do it. So actually, there, there is a trans male author, Yoon Ha Lee, actually throws off the count a bit because um, he is a trans male author and he would actually um, swing over the male authors so the male authors actually have, you know, more more yeah. books in the air. Yeah. And um, what was the other one? It was... Um, uh, 
Uh, no, what was the what was the book? All the birds in the sky. Where is it? Yes. It's uh, somewhere. Oh yeah. Anyway, trans. Oh yeah, yeah. Here it is. Charlie Jane Anders, who we just talked about earlier on the podcast, is is um, female uh, trans. So you know, born biological. Like on the again, I don't want to say it all wrong, all the wrong terminology. But her birth certificate was male, and now she is female. And Yul Harleen is the opposite way round as yes. well. So having it exactly fifty fifty, it turns out not exactly fifty fifty, depending on ha- how you're counting. And of course, I'm going to count how they would count themselves. They say they're male, and they say they're female. They he he says he's male, and she says <laughs> it's so tricky to get all this right we in should, trans we should, awareness month. Turkish, they don't have you know, Yeah, exactly. There's there's easy ways to do this, and that's what I want to get to in a minute. But again, it's it's almost fifty fifty. But again, there's ways that I could fudge the the writing in both ways. For example, I reread these books, you know, by R. Scott Backer, and I'm like, okay, I, those are rereads rather than first time reads. So should they count it? And I was and I'd already reviewed those, so I was actually just rereading these three books in a row mm. to get to the next book that came out in the series. That's one way of looking at it. And um, yeah, so rereading books is a different thing than reading books. So yeah, um, let's get on to. Yeah, we've talked a bit about the um, gender pronouns. I've talked about this quite a few times on the podcast. And this is something that I've definitely noticed as I've been reading more non-straight white male um, science fiction. It's a lot more fluid. Well, yeah, it's just a lot more open for a lot of that kind of stuff. Because this is, you know, when you read about the lived experiences of minorities, you just know more about that and you're more sensitive to that kind of thing. Yeah. So if you're only reading straight white male guys... It's straight white guy, male authors, whatever. I think you, a very good example for that is Peter F. Hamilton. Yes. He's so, yes, exactly. so closed in his views on the characters. Yeah. Every time I read a book of his, yeah. I notice the same thing. Yeah, it's sort of like so stereotypical and yeah. sometimes... And, and even that kind of thing goes back to Heinlein. Heinlein is all like, yay, free love. Everyone loves each other and sex and it's all open. Uh, no, no gay, no, nothing gay. No, no, no it's no, only, no. Male and, uh, only male and female and stuff like that. And there's a massive orgy, but, you know, no man touched another penis in the nah. entire time. No, no. It's, Why would you? Exactly. So that is one of those things. <sighs> it, again, don't. Uh, uh, we've, I've talked about this so much in the podcast about these things, you know, about robot genders and about um, non-binary gender and trans characters and trans authors talking about, you know, like all that kind of stuff. It is just so much more interesting reading about uh, those kind of things from the point of view of female characters. I do want to give... Uh, 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 you know, we could go through different things sort of like, yeah, we talked about an- an ancillary justice, ancillary mercy. There's like uh, the pronouns thing. So everyone yes. is called she. There's um, a great book, which I read, really enjoyed it. Oh, no, I've lost I've lost the lid, the, the thing here. So um, the stars are legion by Cameron Hurley. Every character, it's not just only using female pronouns. Every character is female. It's on a spaceship and the spaceship is kind of like the male and then they they kind of get impregnated and give birth to like spaceship parts to rebuild the space. Anyway, <laughs> it's absolutely, uh, absolutely crazy, yeah. completely fucked up and great to read that kind of stuff. Again, yeah. not, I'm not saying all of these novels are amazing, but all of them have got this interesting stuff going on. Yes. Arda Palmer with the um, Seven Surrenders and what was the previous one? Um... Oh, I can't find it now. There's, oh, yeah, no, yeah, Too Light the Lightning and Seven Surrenders. Again, there is, it's very much sort of like, okay, what the gender that the characters have isn't always represent, is, you know, the biological gender is different from their, you know, lived gender, whatever, yeah. you know what I'm to say. Uh, again, I'm, I might not be getting all the r- words right, but, you know, I'm trying. Isn't it that with, um, um, who is it? It's not Alistair Reynolds. Is it Alistair Reynolds where they do just, the the characters have the ability to just choose the gender. Yes, yeah, that's that. that that's that is, a, that's so great. That yeah, is so no, it's in in the great. culture series. The yes, culture the series, culture it's series like, is so great. You can just so, oh, yes. well, I now have a, a period where I I'm a, a I'm woman. gonna be a woman, and then I, what they do is they they have there's a couple, and then they impregnate each other. One of the the man impregnates the woman, and then the woman holds the the pregnancy dormant. They both change sex. Previous she is now a he in in impregnates the man who is now a woman, yeah. and then they she then changes back to woman, and then they both go right now we're both women go with the pregnancies, and both yes. their pregnancies start up again, and then they have babies at the same time, and it's they're both having brilliant. they're both the father and they're both the mother, or they both are a father and a mother yeah. of each other's children, children. and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean 
it's not like all male authors drop the ball on this kind of stuff. There are male authors like like the culture with Peter, no, not Peter, uh, with Ian M. Banks with his oh, series. Oh, Ian yeah. M. Banks. Ian M. Banks, yeah. yeah. So he does have that. Also, a shout out to um, uh, Alistair Reynolds in his novels. I can't remember which is the more recent one. The one with the elephants, the chil- uh, the um, Poseidon's wait, yeah, Poseidon's children. There are characters in there which is just a character, and it's a non-gender specific character. And he uses the pronoun like V and ver, like viz, you know, putting a V instead of a he, not, not, instead of a h huh for male and sh. Huh for women it's yeah. a the and it just becomes a gender neutral pronoun and to be honest I know it sounds weird I really prefer that to the yeah. using they because it always comes down to they you are introducing necessary ambiguity into the gender that you're talking about but accidentally introducing um, numerical um numerical uh, ambiguity as yeah. well. Does that make sense? Yes. I saw there's one thing on Twitter going around where they showed uh, screenshots of Google Translate mm. where they had a, a Turkish sentence and they put it through Google Translate. Uh, always, and back again. And yeah, back yeah. again. Yeah. And it was like, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the, the doctor went to his locker yeah. and then you put that in, it is the, the Turkish sentence and then you yeah. put it in and then it came out the doctor went to her locker yeah. and then you, you had like this variety of that what that one sentence yes. could mean so yeah I think that should be exactly that is and that's what yeah. these different authors are going for when like say in Ancillary Justice all of the characters are just referred to as her and she yeah. and I'm like yes let's do that and but what I don't like about and I like that approach and I also like um, just the author themselves themselves uh, themselves or themselves you see that works themselves yeah. or themselves works but the author they will do this author they yeah okay so it's that introduction of of numerical ambiguity yeah. when you want it to be ambigu- ambiguous or non-specific non-gender specific but accidentally make it non-numerical like uh, plural or non-plural yeah. specific in, in, I think and, in, and that in, really that, that it's just confusing it's like an extra step it's like yes, yes go for non-gender binary uh, pronouns no don't go for accidentally making it plural or non-plural non-plural yeah. and it's and it's and this is not a political stance. It's, it's purely just a, like, oh, they did this. And I was like, okay, in the previous sentence, you were talking about two people, and then you talk about one person, and then you say they. Are you talking about the one person who yeah. is ju- non-gender binary, or you just non, like, or you want a gender neutral? Or now are you still talking about two, the two of them did that, or just the one who is, and it's, and that's the kind of confusion which makes, and so while I disagree with people who say, oh, you should, why don't you just say he or she? And I'm like, yeah, he or she works. I like he or she. I also like they, but I, I could, I kind of want another, uh, not, I want a word. Pronoun, yeah. I just want a pronoun, yeah. which is, which is numerically specific, but gender non-specific. Yes. And we don't have that. But I don't want to make that into a political stance. It's purely a, a, a reading and liter- literary stance. Do you understand? Yeah. Like, yeah. If, if transgender people want to be called they, I'm like, yes, I'm going to call you they because you want to be called they. Yes. I'm not going to call you, you know, it or something. Or, I, I, or I'm not going to call you he or she or the, or all these other kind of things that could be there. Yeah. I don't want to do that. So from a political point of view, I'm like, yes, let's use they. But from like a, s- a specific writing kind of thing, I'm like, oh, can we just come up with a new word that we can all agree on? But no, that's yeah. not how it works. It yeah. isn't some science fiction authors aren't going to change the world on this one. Uh, can I can I tell you how it works in German? Yeah, go for it. So in, in the German language and in German politics in general, uh, we do have a lot of gender focused uh, things you know yeah. the st- gender studies and all this kind of stuff is coming up a lot in recent yeah. years and so what happens is that uh, in German you do have in lots of words the um, the female and a male version uh, so if you want to address kind of, yeah. no, no not daddy does but he and she so if oh, you want to oh, address yes. like uh, um, yeah a teacher and teacher in yeah uh, Lehrer sorry. und yeah. Lehrerinnen yeah uh, so you're a Lehrerin and when you have more you're Lehrerinnen and yeah. Lehrer is always like one yeah. thing. So, but that kind of, what m- comes up also in recent times is that people get so sick of this. Uh, and you know, they have like, you replace the Innen with stars or yeah. you, you, you call everybody Innen because then you include the yeah. 
the, the male version into the female version and yeah. uh, it's just so complicated it, they make it so complicated that people say oh what's all, all this gender shit yeah. we should just yes, exactly. stop that that's what I'm saying like and the more complicated it is for people to use the less the more annoying the less, people are going to be yes, used the more annoyed yeah. they got and the, the less open for the idea what that's actually behind it yeah right become. now I see what you're saying it's yeah. not the dirty das it's not like no, we, not, we have a we have a yeah it's not we because that's what I'm saying you you have gendered articles but also the neutral article but it's not that's not what you're talking that's about it's more about. so yeah in english this happened so it's like, like actor and actress yes exactly yeah. I was gonna, exactly the example i was going to bring up <laughs> yeah. um the 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 reason why they can get away with it the actors can say oh no we're not actors and actresses anymore we're just all actors the reason they can get away with it is that they have the bully pulpit they have the they have the place where they can say no now the oscars it's going to be um uh, an award for the uh, uh, achievement a uh, great achievement by a women a uh, 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 woman in a lead role or a male in a lead role it, you know they just change the language and because they're the oscars and they're the they're the association of of uh, movie whatever it is uh, the no the Academy of Movie, blah, blah, blah. Um, whatever the Academy is, I can't remember. But whatever they are, they have a massive voice and they can just say, oh no, from now on we're just going to be... Act-. But waitresses don't have that. Waiters and waitresses, they don't have a like literally a billion dollar industry where they're telling people how to say, to talk about their own thing. They don't have a massive industry which does press tours of like the greatest waiters and the greatest waitresses. So... I find this tricky in my own way when I say, oh, uh, shall I just say servers or wait staff? I, I go to wait staff for waitresses yeah. and waiters because I think wait staff is just, it, it's, it's kind of like fluid enough or like easy enough to say and it doesn't feel like I'm putting in an effort to say waiters and waitresses or w- w- male and female waiters. You know, yeah. it's not like they are oh, male and female actors. No, it's just actors now. Yeah. Actors, actors and actresses have got past it. So now it's just actors. Yeah. I'm an actor, you're an actor. And so it should be with authors. It, yes, authors are the same thing. You don't get authors and authoresses. It's just authors. But that's not a, that's not a word. But I'm just saying waitresses don't have the yeah. power of Hollywood behind them to say, now yeah. we are not waitresses, we are all just waiters. Yeah. And in, yeah. in the German language, that is, gets kind of more difficult because there are so many words that you would just use to address uh, a group of people. And it's in French and in, in Italian, it's the same. When you have a group of people, there's one male person in it suddenly the whole group is addressed as male. Yes, yes. You know, and so we we had these issues at university. So now university has a new set of rules, how you talk to the students. You just need a style guide, a writing style guide. That's all it it takes. And also it takes up to just come up with new words that fit. Yes, but again, I can't, that's not up to us, that's not up to me. A long time we were talking about students as studenten. And studenten, it comes from at first people to go to university were all males. So there is no... Studentinnen. Yeah. That, that, that also. <laughs> so it kind that, of it was it worked out yeah. accidentally worked and out. So now way. we're calling them Studierende, which is like okay. Pe- that's weird. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, like people, people students studying. Yes. Like th- that's now yeah. Studierende. Studiers, not students, but studiers, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. So yeah. and this is now a way to get around to address all of them as a like yeah. everyone studying. Yes. So and I think this should happen way more in language yeah. that you just don't say okay now we're only going to use one word like actor yeah. but come up with a new like people like um, um, I don't know actoring or whatever I don't know actoring actoring yes. yes. I, I, I don't understand you know like but again I th- like say words. actors they've cleared that like, they've cleared the bar already you yes. don't you don't really hear about and, actresses anymore it's I'm, just all actors I'm so. pretty sure there is a word out there that people use as a pronoun for in English language, yeah, for yeah. everyone. But then there's a there's a, there are issues with that. Like for example, there's the Latino, you know, about Latinos, and then Latinas, and yeah. then like, oh, so what we should do is that the Latinos and Latinas is male and female. But what if somebody doesn't want to it? So let's be Latin X with just an X on the end. I'm not sure how to. How re- do you pronounce it? I don't know. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. But I've seen it written. But then I've also read other people say, oh no, that's bad because that's not Latinos and Latinas saying that. That's what they want to be called. Mm. That's you, North American gender study, uh, ethnic study people, yes. putting that on them. And Latinos and Latinas call themselves Latinos because, again, it's that if there's any one male in the group, then yeah. they become it becomes all group. whatever. Yeah. Like that. So, again, I don't feel comfortable mm. coming like saying what this should be. It's yeah. just... From my own experience reading it, it's, I find the science fiction explorations of this really interesting because when we're talking about, okay, what gender is a robot or what do robots call themselves? Yeah. And this can be like a way in to take someone who is 
like not born the wrong gender and then needs to transition to the correct gender of the, the, the gender they identify with. What happens if someone is born literally with no gender? Well, that can't really happen in a way which is easy to write about in a story, but a robot is born without gender because they're not born, they're created genderless and that's it. So the robot deciding what gender they're going to be calling themselves or what other people are going to refer to them as is a way that you can explore gendered characters free of the baggage of biology and, and society, society and all of that kind of yes. stuff. So science fiction is a great way to explore this. Unfortunately, some of the books that I read try and like we, we talked about in the pad in the podcast two podcasts ago which we just did this morning but mm -hmm. out of time again it's one of those things it's such a big issue and i and i really like it when a really skilled actor explores these kind of author. Th oh, sorry author yeah i was just talking about <laughs> a, a really skilled author or authoress um or authorex uh or whatever it is uh, so uh, yeah i i like it when it and it and when that pays off, it can be really interesting. And it changes my mind on how I consider these things. It changes my own language. It changes the way I think about gender by reading science fiction. That is a journey that I've gone through over the past two years and a, and a bit. Let's say two years and a bit. Yeah. But it kind of came to the foreground when I was... Um, when I uh, first of all, actually, it was, it was some of these earlier books with. Oh no, let's go. Let's go over here to the uh, the book list here. Um, before I uh, before we got to some of those uh, episodes, what was it? Um, Nancy? No, not Nancy. Grace. Anyway, there was like the ten books in a row of male authors and stuff yes. like that. But before that, I'd read some other books, which it kind of yeah, like even um, uh, the uh, Ian M. Banks and stuff like that. Some of his stuff. It, so it, it wasn't only female authors who started me thinking along that way. It was yeah. just authors in general and some of the approaches that science fiction authors. But then I do think Ancillary Justice was the one that kind of kicked it off this modern way. It's sort of like, oh, isn't it so interesting that everyone is referred to as a she? And I'm like, didn't we do... Didn't I read The Left Hand of Darkness? No, what was the other one? No, The Dispossessed, where by, uh, 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 where that was the, Ursula, K. Ursula K. Le Guin. And there's a whole race of people who uh, have non-gender specific. And all the time they're calling this character he. And then part of the way, it, it, it's constantly pushed into your face. Like, oh, we're calling them, we're calling them, there you go, them. Yeah. We're calling them a he. But actually, it's not a he, and all the time it's sort of like, oh no, no, he was he was never a he. I've just been calling him a he because that's the way that I use language. Yeah. But it wasn't a he. Anyway, he did this, and you're like, no, 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 go back a bit. Let's go back a bit. Like, tell the same story with non-gender. But that was back before. Well, not before, but like, so it's always been there. But like, I do think the uh, like the, the 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 over the last three four years has come much more about with Anne Leckie with the ancillary justice series kind of put this, this some of these ideas into the foreground yeah. to the point where and this comes back to the co comment there's two things that i've noticed about this first i don't think the um uh, the uh, Ada Palmer Too Light the Lightning series and all these other books you know which are totally more gender fluid and just he's and she's and gender pronouns are just not significant and it's literally the discussion in the book is like oh actually we're going to call this a he and then you're like eh, it looks like a female and it's like later on it's like oh yeah it was a female but he and then just saying oh actually now this character is being more female so now let's call it a now let's call them she so from now on we're just going to refer to the character and it's totally fluid in that way I think that fluidity is kind of been like it, like the ancillary justice has kind of opened the door for lots more characters to just do that and it not be and it be an interesting part of the book but not even the main part of the book you know when ancillary justice first came out half of the things that i it, heard about it were were about oh every character is referred to as a she i think if that book came out now that would be a minor writing stylistic choice hmm. and more people would be interested in oh yeah and and what's it like to be a uh, a robot spaceship with lots of ancillaries all the way around yes that was the other half everyone yeah. was talking about the ancillaries and uh, and also 50 percent was talking about the pronouns now i think if that book came out Hardly anybody would be talking about the pronouns and they'd all be talking about the ancillaries and the, you know, the technical science fiction parts of it. And being a bit. multiple person, or like yeah, a yeah. person with the multiple, multiple viewpoints. Yes. And, and like I say, and I think that's what's happened with Ada Palmer. There's lots of issues in that book and lots of things going on, but having a trans character or a non-gender specific character and all that kind of stuff is just now part of modern science fiction. To the part to the the point where like this this book that we just reviewed just before which is called let's just bring it up again autonomous um which was a book that we just reviewed and read it's sort of like the the gender stuff was yes it was there but it doesn't even feel 
and it, no, it is progressive and it is there, but it's kind of like not even the most important part of a book anymore, if yeah. you know what I mean. Whereas yeah. before that would be the main focus, which brings me to when I read now male authors and they're not doing that kind of thing. I'm not saying not... You're more conscious of it. What's that? You're more conscious. I get bored if it's just right? loads of straight yes. straight people in yeah. a book. Me to too. The point, well, not bored, but it, it feels like there's something... It's sort of like, hey, there's something you could be exploring here or could yeah. be commenting on that you're not. And to bring it back to not all guys, um, you know, people like um, Alistair Reynolds and, and Ian, uh, and Banks. Ian Banks, you yeah. know, there are people who have done this better than other characters, you know, and I'm sure if I look at it, there's some other male authors. But then when I get to a male author who does the opposite and suddenly it's sexist and yeah. stuff, I'd just be like, oh, wow, this is like sex sexism and all that kind of stuff just feels so boringly male now it's it's noticeable for example the r scott backer series and stuff i thought you know halfway through this second these second lots of books i was like oh maybe he's doing something interesting with with gender and women representation in fantasy and high fantasy and then just got to the next few books and i was just like oof oh no it wasn't this is this is actually worse than i thought it was going to be and then we read not prevent what was the other one that we read um oh replay by ken grimwood it was so like entitled um, entitled uh, baby boomer like awful like male blairness yeah. I was just like oh this is just so male this is just and it kind of felt annoying that like what was now standing out was like I mean that's quite, that's an older book you know some of these yeah. books are older books you know, some, and, and lot, like also if you read now older books you realise that even more the how mm. high, how they were in their time like Larry Niven yeah yeah no but then for example example what was that book that we read uh, i know you didn't read it but you i didn't. talked to you about it a yeah. nancy boys by neil gaiman i was just like this is awful like this and i even said at the time i was just like oh this is awful but so like for example peter watts with blindsight he wrote that like sim like you know 10 years ago five years ago whenever it was or however yeah. long ago it was but he doesn't do that just by you know just it's just not about that if you know yes. what i mean it isn't he he doesn't write about relationships he has main characters be female and even he does that thing in Blindsight where there's the character with like three, no, four, the gang of four or something like that, which is a, again, it's a woman character. Was it a woman character? Two, yeah. Two women? Yeah, it was a woman character with uh, two women characters in there, a male and then sort of like some other person who was just there as a, Sometimes, like, that, yeah. like that. So that character could be doing it. And even he's writing about, oh, and that's, that's kind of what, I, that's the kind of stuff like, hey, you're in a science fiction world in the future, anything could be possible. Yeah. So why not have a character who is having a love affair with somebody else who's got four characters in and go no 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 I don't want to I don't want to talk to you and have a relationship with you bring out the guy Michelle, in, uh, whatever, Michelle. Yeah. yeah it's sort of like mm. yeah Michelle bring out Michelle I want to talk to Michelle I don't want to talk to James or whatever the other person was you know yeah. so like there are people male authors who are messing around in this area and exploring the area as well but when I read a book which is just so straight, like even a kind of a more modern book or more recent book, like, you know, Neil Gaiman, who is still writing, like he's not died and he's not like, you know, retired from writing. He's still writing these books. I'm just like, it's kind of like a missed, a missed opportunity. Stephen King writing his third ever novel as The Running Man. I'm like, yeah, OK, that, that was from like 1971. I'll give him a, I'll give him a pass because, yeah. you know, everyone can improve. My own story has shown that. Like if I now look back and read my own novels, I'd be like, wow, Bechdel test fail here. Yeah, totally. Uh, again, but it's like when you're writing a first novel, yes, you, write you are what you writing know. from your point of because you're safe with this because yeah. you know what yeah. the way to look through. That's your the eyes, thing. Right? If you everybody's first novel, they pretty much write a novel about themselves and their ideas and their identities. You know, that's what everyone yes. puts in the first novel. Yeah. So if this I, is why if, oh, oh, one, one of that, I think that was very impressive about Ted Chang. Ted Chang, what did you read from him? Well, well we read the um, uh, the what was it called? Arrival. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's no, not it's called not the, the, yeah. the, the stories story of, of your life, other, your life, and then others. Where he's writing from a point of view of a woman, yeah, uh, bringing up a child and giving birth and stuff. Mm. And I think at, at that point, even I even, I even um, uh, said it when yeah. we did the podcast. I always think that is very brave and very impressive when you do that. Yeah. 
because to put the the, the compassion. The, yeah, that's a short story. He didn't go into too much depth no, there, but really. I but I do understand. It. I do understand. Yeah, and it's it sort of like possible. well done, Admiral. Yes. Go for it and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't want to hold myself up to the same standards as professional, paid, long published authors. I'm self published, and I haven't written a novel yeah, in course. eight years or something like yeah. that. So if I was to write a new novel now. I'm sure it would actually, it as would I be said different. before, the story that I'm doing now, which I'm writing a musical and it's a science fiction um, uh, musical, comedy musical set in space. I'm trying to write it as gender neutral as possible because if I ever do get people to record this, I want to just be able to say to any singer, like, does your voice fit? Yes, no. Doesn't matter if male or female or whatever. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, So I'm writing, there are a few characters which I, I, I know what their gender would be for other reasons, you know, just for like right. a, uh, another reason, because I know even in the future in science fiction circles, someone who had toy dinosaurs is probably going to be is probably going to be male, or I'm playing off the you know boys like guns and cars and dinosaurs kind sure. of thing. So there's only pretty much only one character who I have fixed in my head as being male, but only because he's an old old guy. You know, yeah. that's that's his perspective in this. And everybody else could be male or female. Some of the songs do reference penises and sex, but that's easy enough to swap that kind of stuff around, you know. Yeah. So I quite like the idea of starting a story with non like every character gender non-specific until maybe it'll make a sense for it to go one way or the other. But actually, a science fiction story doesn't need to have gender one way or the other. So no. even my own my, even my own storytelling can be improved. I will hold myself to the same standard as I'll hold Isn't other people. Isn't that what they did with Hamilton? What's where that? Some people were then switched to male or female. No, 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 it's, no, no, no. They, they say that's what they're going to do in the future. Ah. So far, they because it's all um, it's all a, a story of white people, and everyone is is played by actors of color. So it's all um. black people, Hispanic people, and other things like that. Perfect. And there's only one white actor in the whole thing or performing the whole thing yeah. and it is that the king of england who is the person you know is yeah. the, the king of england is the white guy and everyone else is uh, people of color and uh, yeah but that's going to be really tricky to do when schools start performing it and maybe the schools don't have uh, an entire cast worth of people of color and so white people have to be involved so to again make it inclusive they're going to do uh, gender flip the roles yeah. so a woman can play um you know any Hamilton. character well yeah either the woman can play Hamilton and then it wouldn't be the Skylar sisters they could have the Skylar brothers or just have the Skylar sisters and just men are playing that part you know or just have Hamilton be uh... yeah uh... And, but that's the point is that like it's fine to open it up for yeah. schools to do anything because yeah maybe you're gonna have Hercules Mulligan be you know uh, whatever I don't know it could be anyone any of the most of these characters could be anyone and that's actually i think the only failing of hamilton the musical i've never not seen it of course i've just listened to the uh, the album is that for it being so progressive in some ways with race and representation of of uh, of race on stage for, you know of opportunities for black performers yeah it's not and other with things gender. like that What's that? Yeah, for gender, it's like literally one line where they say, hey, I'm going to get Thomas Jefferson to put women in the sequel. And I'm like, and then for the rest of the song, I was like, oh, that was it, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're going to say in the future, the sequel to this may have women in important positions, or otherwise they're just going to be, I mean, it's historical. So of course, back then yeah. the women didn't have a whole lot of input into it compared to the men. So it is understandable, but it does make me think, ah, they could have just had a, I don't know, yeah. just a few more main characters just go, ah, just have a woman playing this part. But again... Uh, steps at a time one step at a time yeah. I think in that yeah. case so well I know a bit of uh, opera kind of things on stage and yeah. it's like you do have a, an unproportional amount of women who want to become singers so you have loads and loads of female singers and then only on, a few parts of that. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah and then on the opera stage you have the demand it's uh, impressive for yeah. tenors and baritones and yeah. even basses and like it, all the cast on stage on an opera will always be two or three women and maybe five and six or six or seven men. Yes. That is just how yes. it developed. and uh, It's tricky. It's tricky. To, but, but again, here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing, cool thing. Let's, let's look at it this way. Let's do the natural experiment. In orchestras in Germany, they said from now on, every audition is going to be blind. So what we do is we put a screen up and the person comes in and this is their audition. The, the, the examiners are one side of the screen, they can't see the person, they sit down, they play some music, and that's it. And then they judge who gets into the, into the audition, like who gets into the um, uh, orchestra, orchestra by doing that. 
you can't do that with singers, no. but you can do it with musicians. And it turns out when they did that, the representation of uh, like all the new hires, it was like 50-50 splits because it turns out being male, violinist or female affect. doesn't affect it at all. No. With singers, it does because of the voice thing as well like that. But how about authors? Maybe from now on, what we need to do is I need to remove all um, gendered names from every book that I read yeah. And I need to, or I just need to be handed them and then say, like, which ones are my favorites? Are they male or female or whatever like that? And that actually happened in, in one of these latest books. There was um, a book came out by someone called M.R. Carey, and it's called The Girl with All the Gifts. And as I was reading it, I was about halfway through and I was like, huh, I'm not sure. Is M.R. Carey, is that a guy or, a, you know, is that a male author or a female author? What is, what is going on here? Is it a man or a woman? And I was like, and, and as I was reading it, I was like, I'm guessing a guy. And then I looked it up, yeah, it's a guy, you know. But there's other times, like I say, I read a book by P.D. James, Children of Men, you know, that was made into the movie. Yeah. And um, I did that whole review, didn't know that P.D. James was a woman, but it had James in it. So that it was like that, you know, uh, the um, James T T Tiptree Jr. kind of thing where yeah. it's sort of like the name is just put in there to make me go, oh, is this going to be a man or a woman? And at that yeah. time, it's not that I thought it was a woman. It's not that I thought it was a man. I guess I just defaulted to saying he, maybe. I don't know. But so often I say now, the author does this. I don't want to say he does this or she does this. I always try and like remove that from them and just say, the author does this or just say the whole name. Annalie Nevitz does yeah. this. Yeah. You know, um, R. Scott Backer does this or the author does this. I don't like even say, when I'm talking about authors now, I don't like saying he or she. Also often you don't, can't, you can't pronounce their name. Yes, exactly. So you That's kind of too... avoid that. But also what always uh, gets me so much when I'm reading a book and I read something and then I, I have a vision of this character in my head, I'm always or often so surprised by my own failure or like by how much I'm shaped by the society thinking in these categories. And of yeah. course, as a human being, you, you, your natural instinct is to put things in categories yes. just to cope with yeah. things. Again, we've got a lot of human baggage that comes along with all yeah. of this stuff, which is like, we've got like a billion years of evolution to yeah. get to where we are now. Yeah. And, so, it, and it can change and it will change again if we all just try a little bit to put in the effort and again that's just to bring it around full circle i think we should wrap it up because we've been talking yes. an hour now that's a good but again up, my full circle was let's just try an experiment one of the partner was like let's just try it 50 percent women authors you know uh, plus or minus a few by you know rereads or trans authors you know which however you want to count all of this kind of stuff but like first of all how will it affect me second of all will anyone even notice and guess what Nobody noticed. Not a single bit of feedback to say, hey, you've been reading lots of women authors or wow, it's really, you've really improved by the women authors or not women authors. Like not a single comment. Nobody no. noticed. So it can only be like can, the, the worst thing it. is the yeah. worst thing is it can be utterly utterly neutral the best thing is i can do my tiniest the littlest part i can do for to get a little bit more representation for this kind of thing so uh i like uh, that yeah so that's it and i thought it'd be fun just to just to um uh, throw this on you just to see if you noticed you didn't notice I mean again you're not a listener to my podcast you just hear me record them and talk to me about this stuff as well so uh, yeah I think that's it right um, 350 yeah, that's yeah a lot. 350 episodes and uh, yeah in January we might do a 10 year thing I'm not sure I do about 10 years of the podcast maybe I'll change the, the, the image because there's still a picture of me literally like 10 that. years ago yeah. I like that image. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun image, but eh, maybe it could do with updating. It's really low resolution, and I kind of want to use it in different places. And it's oh, like okay. it's like six hundred or four hundred pixels by four hundred pixels, or whatever the iTunes art size was back then. It's yes. a slightly different size. All right, that's it. An hour talking about that kind of stuff. And again, I've gone into this uh, about so many books. People go, "Oh, he's always talking about gender stuff and non-gender specific." Product. Yeah, it's just those are the books I'm reading, and now you know why I've talked about that stuff. A lot of the time. I don't think anyone has com complained. But sometimes I'm like, wow, I keep going on about these different subjects. It's like, yeah, that's those are just the subjects I'm reading and uh, the authors that I'm reading and the things that come that's, up. These are the topic of the to topics of the topics time. Topics of the time, yeah. yeah. And again, like I say, I'm a trailing indicator of this because it was a few years ago when this kind of stuff happened politically within science fiction reading community, which I don't, which I guess I'm part of. I don't really feel like I'm part of it. But, you know, I, I do sometimes follow along with awards and that kind of stuff. So this is my belated uh, call or notice that I did hear and did do my little part, but I just thought I'd just not talk about it. 
because it can be a bit like preachy and otherwise I'm just like nope yeah. don't need anything like that that's good two, just, two just... years later so what do you think should I keep doing it yeah keep I like reading it. 50% why not well I thought there's there's other reading there's programs no... I do now I it can just be no it, it doesn't have to be like an effort I think I'll just go oh well look I've done that and now I'll it, it'll probably just happen naturally if it's just one thing that's a consideration mm. but hey maybe there's other underrepresented things that in two years time I'd be like to talk about I can't think of any off the top of my head except you know non like maybe tr- authors in translation anyway doesn't matter all about that right that's it um, thanks a lot for listening and I'll catch you next time goodbye